So first I'm just going to go through what is peacemaking and then we'll actually go into this hypothetical scenario. Um, the elements of peacemaking that I'll be speaking about today is really just a part of this cookie cutter model that can be used in multiple tribal communities. Um, a lot of these elements are present in the tribal communities that are using peacemaking, but every element might not be used by every, every community using this, um, this method. So peacemaking is a traditional Native American approach to problem solving that focuses on healing and restoring relationships between parties in disagreement. That definition is provided by the Native American Rights Fund. Really, peacemaking includes aspects of cultural competency and being community-based. And that's what is the, at the core of peacemaking. So to be culturally competent means that peacemaking is able to incorporate different cultural elements into the entirety of the peacemaking process. This includes language, spirituality, oral traditions, prayers. These are all built into peacemaking and they change from community to community, but they're usually a core tenant of the process. Additionally, um, there is this community-based value, and that means that not only are the people who are in conflict a part of the process, but we invite family and friends and other members who can help provide background on the conflict that has occurred and can additionally provide support as we find a resolution and as we go forward. And I would say that those are the two biggest elements of peacemaking. Additionally, peacemaking is led by a peacemaker. Today, I'll be acting as a peacemaker in a conflict resolution uh, setting. This individual can often be a leader in the community or an elder in the community, but mainly their goal is to help find the root of the conflict and to maintain order in the conflict resolution process. Additionally, peacemaking, as you'll see here, is often held in a circular space. Um, that can be because of the cultural tenets of a community and uh, circular spaces often have a cultural meaning. But additionally, having a circular space removes places of hierarchy. So when we're in court systems, we often see that a judge is sitting up above those who are in the conflict. But in peacemaking, we're able to be in a space where we are all sitting on the same level and we're able to be in the space of community, but also uh, the signal of equality is in that space. So throughout the peacemaking process, we'll also incorporate um, culture through having talking pieces and center pieces. Having these centering pieces um, acts as an object that those who are participating in peacemaking um, can look at can reflect um, upon. These can also often be cultural items, but they can also just be pieces that um, the person who is speaking can look at if they don't feel comfortable making eye contact with those in the circle. Additionally, we have our talking piece. And the talking piece is passed from person to person as a signal of whose turn it is to speak. It once again can have a cultural significance, but it's also really used to maintain order within the peacemaking circle. Um, values are often also shared within the peacemaking uh, circle, um, but while a peacemaking circle is being designed by the community that is going to utilize it, um, often those people who are designing the peacemaking circle or the peacemaking process will come up with a list of values that the community, um, the community wants to hold on to in times of conflict. This list of values is often read at the beginning of peacemaking circles um, in the community that is utilizing them. And so those are ways for those who are in conflict to really reflect upon what they need to hold on to in that time of conflict. Additionally, a value that was, uh, additionally a method that was taught to me by my mentor, Cheryl Fairbanks, is this opportunity to share your own values during the peacemaking process itself. So when we're going through introductions, having this time to share a personal value and who taught you that value and by starting with this, we're able to share our backgrounds with other people, but additionally, we're able to recognize the shared humanity that's in this space, and that's something that's important to hold on to in a peacemaking space while you're going through conflict resolution. And then additionally, I think it's important to talk about how peacemaking can be used. So often we see peacemaking used in tribal communities, in tribal settings. It can be an alternative to the tribal court system, um, as another conflict resolution mechanism, but 
we at Stanford have been using it in residential spaces, in classrooms, and even in conversations between the administration and the student body. Um, we're able to do this because peacemaking is based on values of, this, of community and culture, but is also extremely effective when you want to maintain relationships in a space. So our university has its own community and it has its own culture, but additionally, we're able to hold on to these relationships by using peacemaking, right? We interact with each other every day. I'm interacting with my peers, with those who are in the administration, and so holding on to those values is really important, and that's why a process like peacemaking has shown success in a university setting. So the big differences between other restorative justice methods and peacemaking are these community and culturally based values that peacemaking holds on to. While other restorative justice mechanisms often um, borrow uh, systems from indigenous communities, peacemaking is specifically unique because it really, um, it really holds on to this indigenous component and it makes this indigenous component um, and culture really known in its process by the incorporation of our talking pieces and the way that we incorporate prayer and all of these different aspects. But additionally, just having uh, a place for community to really interact with the conflict and moving the conflict from the individual to the entire community, um, as shared by another mentor of mine, Kay Pranis, is really what peacemaking is about. And so that's why it's so unique in itself.